Any artists in the audience? <laughs> Thank you, artists, because you understand that freedom, whether political, personal, or artistic, is critical to a healthy society and democracy. And I like democracy. I like the arts too. I'd even consider myself artsy, but I'm not an artist. So why am I talking to you about how we can change our communities through art expression and performance? Because art underscores the humanity in each one of us, a shared trait regardless of where we're from. Art fosters a sense of belonging, a sense of connection, a sense of community. The arts are also inclusive. Unlike other disciplines, whether on stage or backstage, a patron or consumer, a professional or amateur, anyone can participate in the arts. In other words, the arts can unite us. It is my hope that we will leave here tonight seeing the people who form our communities, our country, in a new way, in a way we can relate to, in a way that unites us. I graduated from Barry with a degree in international business in 1996. I had no idea what shape my career would take, but I did know even then that I would color outside the border of this American land. I'm proud to tell you that with my friend and mentor, Joy DeMarchis, and my friend Mabel Torres, who's here tonight, I was a charter organizer of the Festival of Nations, a cultural expo of food and performances from around the world. Not only did the festival increase international student retention, but it has fostered world peace and global understanding for 27 years. I was recruited to the Peace Corps while here at Barry. I served as a small business development volunteer and helped women in Guatemala mass produce handmade textiles, glass straps, and hacky sacks for export. The profits from their art created change that fed their families, brought potable water and literacy. I then went on to law school in hopes of creating change through our courts. That's where I met my husband, Neil, who came to the US from Jamaica as a child. He's been here so long we call him Jamaican. <laughs> we opened our own law office and have two girls. Were, we still are, living our American dream. Our girls who share Neil's Jamaican heritage and the Italian heritage from my father's side are Rick nicknamed Rasta Pastas. <laughs> Although my dad's side is Italian American, my mother's side is Cuban American. My great grandmother, there they are, Isabel, was an artist. She was an opera singer based out of New York City, but born in Havana. Donde están los cubanos? <laughs> All right. She was pregnant with my grandfather while on a world tour in Costa Rica and gave birth prematurely after the earthquake of 1910. She was inspiring, a working woman performing on stage while pregnant and giving birth in a foreign country. I am named after that strong woman from more than a century ago. I stand before you today as part Italian, part Cuban, I joke Jamaican by marriage, <laughs> but most importantly, I'm all American. I'm an immigration attorney. I'm the president of the Holocaust Education Resource Council known as HERC, and I'm the mother of two first-generation American girls, and that's why I'm here tonight. Now I'd like to tell you about a few of my changemaker clients starting with Japanese-born percussionist Chihiro Shibayama. She was in Miss Saigon on Broadway, and she played a bowl of water in Tan Dunn's opera, T. Amir. Aside from performances, she's connecting artists through her nonprofit, Muse, 
which promotes multicultural and multidisciplinary artistic expression. But beyond all that, she's using her platform to help other artists with a website full of advice with topics such as how to tune, how to prepare for rehearsal, and how to make cold calls. Next is Sasha McVeigh, a British-born country singer who wrote her first song at age 12. Now she's living her dream in Nashville. I thought she had made it big when her face appeared on the label of a can of chili, <laughs> but I knew she was a true American country star when she released her song, God Bless This Mess, <laughs> and of course when she hit one million streams. But Sasha is making change for the betterment of her adopted country. She appeared with First Lady Dr. Jill Biden and helping with vaccines. She also helped more than 400 artists receive unemployment benefits during the pandemic. This is Rene Fuganti from Brazil. His daughter was born with one hand. He's speaking across the country to school children and their families about bullying, accepting each other's differences, and showing mercy. Some other clients include a Spanish composer who transcribes music for blind musicians, an Indian architect who designs sustainable spaces, a Colombian Christian rock band, a sculptor whose wood pieces are on display at Windsor Castle, and an actor who was knighted by the Queen and who you might recognize from a popular historical drama on PBS. Much like this audience, much like my own family, American audiences might see themselves in these artists and realize their own potential. And that we, whether Jamaican American, Cuban American, or British American, are all American. This is because art removes the hyphen between our heritage. Art smears the line on the map that separates the us and the them. Throughout history, not much good has come from an us and them approach. It was the us and them mentality that helped to fuel the Holocaust. At a recent Herc event, I heard photojournalist Rachel Cerati speak about her grandmother, Hannah, a survivor whom she profiles in her book, We Share the Same Sky. Hannah says she regrets never having asked her stateless booby whether she felt like she had no homeland or many. And that idea hit a chord because many of my clients are stateless. They have no country to call home. But thinking about statelessness makes it easy to see how sometimes being American is just about paperwork. But Hannah's immigration documents, her family photos, handwritten letters and drawings, lived beyond her to help heal and educate. Educate us to appreciate life, treasure family and freedom, be accepting and loving and better. Because when we share each other's experiences, we see ourselves in them and can simply become us, making it impossible to separate America from its immigrant foundations, just as it's impossible to separate my own family and most likely yours from our immigrant heritage. My work might be unique. We might not all be in the business of helping people become change makers here in American communities through legal immigration, but how many of us are change makers ourselves? How many of us were raised by parents or grandparents who were change makers? How many of us are raising change makers? Take my 13-year-old, my little Rasta Pasta Belen, for example. She's very creative. She was recently asked to make and donate a piece of her art to serve as the prize in a fundraising campaign for Girls on the Run, a nonprofit that helps build confidence in girls of all backgrounds. After that, one of her drawings was selected yep, there she is. to cover the traffic control box outside the state capitol. And she'll soon be profiled in an interview on the Florida Channel. My older daughter, Paloma, 
published a book when she was just 12 years old. She tells the story of her successful advocacy for kids like her who are blind or visually impaired. In other words, immigrants and their families bring a unique sense of expression to our communities. I imagine many of you have a family member or multiple family members who came to this country and changed everything, right? Perhaps some of you are that person in your own family. Without immigrants, there are no Holocaust survivors' stories to tell and be guided by. Without immigrants, there are no British country singers on a can of chili. Without immigrants, there are no Rasta pastas. Without immigrants, there is no Barry Alana on this stage or audience like you, united here in our shared interests in the arts. Without immigrants, without you, America would be a one-man band. But as a united nation of immigrants, we are the symphony that is our society, a diverse democracy. And I ask that you, the artists and the artsy, to see yourselves in each other. <laughs>